Our service also understands that most Canadians have links with homelands, whether real or in recent or remnants of our past, and we, as we are a country, a remarkably diverse country. This is normal for a country that plays such a large role in the world and whose citizens come literally from everywhere. For our purposes today, I limit my remarks to foreign interference in the Canadian political process. A couple of explanatory points, Mr. Chairman. Unlike terrorism or espionage, there is not always a breach of the law. Like ter terrorism or espionage, however, at least some of the influence is covert or secretive. Unless the Canadian being influenced commits a specific, specific violation of Canadian law, the issue of concerns to Canada, to CSIS rather, is Canada's democratic process being affected secretly and by a foreign state. CSIS's objective is threefold, to identify the foreign agent and to cause the influence to be stopped, to identify the person being influenced with a view to making the appropriate authorities aware, and three, to generally protect Canadians from this sort of pressure. And five, the persons being influenced are often Canadians with whom the foreign agent can relatively easily develop a relationship. Having set out the essential characteristics of foreign interference, let me try and illustrate the range of seriousness I mentioned earlier. Regular and overt diplomatic contacts typical in the business of international affairs do not constitute concern unless they become part of a longer-term plan or spectrum of behavior that is detrimental to the interests of Canada. Let me skip through a range of intermediate examples and set out one at the other end of the spectrum. Thus, a case which would be of interest to CSIS would involve an agent of a foreign power providing a Canadian over months or years with various benefits which become increasingly significant, yet less and less open over time. This relationship includes an extensive exchange of views, opinions and information slanted toward what the foreign state is interested in. At some point, consciously or not, the Canadian's views are changed and he or she begins to push or advance them as his or her own, thus potentially affecting decisions with which he or she is involved. A very important point is that foreign interference is intrinsically objectionable to Canada whether or not it succeeds in, obtaining, in attaining the objective of the foreign state because such activity becomes detrimental to the interests of Canada. In summary, I should like to leave you with the following points. National security is not always directly or immediately involved in cases of foreign interference. But where the possibility exists that there is harm to national security and we have reason to suspect this is true, we must investigate. Two, CSIS's mandate is to protect Canadians and our democratic process from covert and deceptive influence. Three, the Canadians identified to be influenced can be anyone with the potential to affect decisions in a manner favorable to the foreign state. Which emerged during the CBC special, I'd like to make three additional points. There was and is no immediate threat to the national security, so we are taking the time to complete our analysis before reporting to government. Two. Given this, there was and is no need to brief the minister until such time as CSIS has completed its analysis and discussed them interdepartmentally. And three, only when these consultations are complete will the service brief the Minister of Public Security and make recommendations on how to proceed. Since the various media reports went to air, one aspect of the discussion of foreign interference that has surprised many in the security and intelligence community has been the general shock at the existence and extent of foreign interference in Canada and elsewhere. I would not wish to belabor the point, but as I indicated earlier, CSIS has been informing successive governments of the threat since its creation. Its last five annual reports have referred to it, and Parliament has annually granted funds for us to investigate foreign interference. It is a threat that is not unique to Canada. Our close allies are also targeted. And it is probably worth noting that our two review bodies have, over the years, regularly looked at and commented on our foreign interference investigation in the same manner that they review, for example, our terrorism case. Mr. Chairman, let me conclude by summarizing a few of the points I've tried to make this morning. One, we do believe there is merit in Canadians being more informed about the threats to our national security. Two, foreign interference as set out in the CSIS Act is a threat in Canada and a threat which I believe Canadians, of which Canadians should be aware. Three, CSIS's principal interest in foreign interference is protecting Canadians in Canada against the efforts of foreign powers. Four, Anyone can be the subject of foreign influence, and often initially they are unwillingly or unwittingly so. Five, foreign influence is not always a direct or obvious threat to national security, but rather a process that, over time, can convertly influence our democratic processes. Six, in respect to the two examples I gave, neither my minister nor the Privy Council Office was briefed on the cases, although they are, gen although they are generally aware of the threat of foreign interference. 
Mr. Chairman, I hope these remarks have been helpful. They have been drawn together on the basis of public and parliamentary comment, but I shall be pleased to try and answer questions on any other manner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Fadden.